Hello, I'm Stephen Chun with Money and & Tech, and we're here at Coin Congress, joined by Stefan Thomas, CTO of Ripple Labs. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, anytime. And how's your Coin Congress going? Uh, it's very interesting. I only got to come here today, uh, but I've already met a lot of familiar faces. Uh, being in the community for four years, like you, you know a lot of people, and it's great to see them again. Now, you spoke earlier this morning. Uh, tell us how that went. Uh, I think it went really well. Um, we just launched a new project called Codius, and I think the reception was really good. So we're excited to like see if people follow up and join the forum and, and interact with us. And speaking of this new product, uh, tell us in detail what Codius is, how it came about, how does it work? So uh, pretty much since Ripple started, uh, we've been trying to figure out a way to get smart contracts into the platform. Um, and in order to do that, we first wanted to build it into the, the network itself, which is what most people who are talking about that concept have been trying to do. Um, but we found that really the way that most applications work is that business logic is separate from your database. You know, you have your servers where your, your complex logic is implemented, and then you have your database, which is usually, it doesn't have any of that complexities, it's just there to store data. Um, and in many ways, Bitcoin and a lot of the other currencies are that. They are databases. They store who owns how much, inform how much money. Um, and what you're trying to do with smart contracts is trying to direct the money and move it around, right? And that's really the logic layer, right? And so instead of trying to build that into the, the cryptocurrency, uh, we created a system which is decentralized but completely independent of any blockchain or ledger. And so you can use it with any, with any cryptocurrency. So do you have miners? Do you have... Um people monitoring? Uh, not at all. So the way that it works is if you want to participate in the system, you want to make money with the system, um, you would just uh, post and say, you know, I'm a Codius host. Anyone who wants to run contracts on my host can do that. Um, if you're a user of the system, you would um, find the host that you're, that you're interested in based on whatever security properties that you want um, and then pay them to run your contract. So it's a very, like, very simple, it's like hosting basically. Right, right. So let's kind of walk through it in a kind of a uh, everyday life. I want to pay you $100 for your DJ table. How would I use Codius? So the two of us would have to agree um, on the set of hosts that we would use. So it'd be, it'd be something like, if we're both Bitcoiners, we might want to use hosts that do mining. Um, if we're both Ripplers, we might want to use like hosts that don't have anything to do with each other and won't collude with each other. So really, depending on what's the underlying use case and what's the underlying database that the co contract is going to interact with, you might choose a different set of hosts. Once you've chosen the host, you have to choose the contract. You have to agree on the terms, just like normal if you, if you would be negotiating any contract. Um, we hope that people will write open source contracts that are out there that you can use. Um, and once you've chosen a contract, you would upload it to all of those hosts. And those hosts would act as the validators for, for the duration of our transaction. And so you're not relying on any of them individually. If any of them run away or, or mistreat you, or whatever it is, it's not, it doesn't break the security of the system. Um, and so it's decentralized. But at the same time, um, you can freely choose what, ho what hosts you want, depending on your security properties that you want. OK. Now, you mentioned smart contracts. But what are smart oracles, and how do they differ from smart contracts? So in the Bitcoin community, there's been this term called an oracle. And what an oracle is is basically something that tells uh, Bitcoin about the real world. Uh, so Bitcoin scripts, they can encode pretty complex logic, but they can't uh, interact with the real world directly. And so oracles are basically things that provide signatures uh, that say things about the real world. Um, and basically, when we're creating this new layer in between the clients and uh, the cryptocurrency networks, that's pretty much the same layer, layer that oracles were at. The only thing we're doing is we're adding logic to it, so they're smart now, so smart oracles. Now walk us back to Codius, you recently launched. Um, what is kind of the, the goal, uh, short term, and then also the goal long term of Codius? So Ripple, we're trying to build a distributed exchange. And in order to do that, um, you have to have a lot of business rules encoded on top of the actual protocol layer. Um, so we ourselves have a big need for smart contracts. And if we look at all the solutions out there and there wasn't the thing that we, that we needed, like we, you know, something like Ethereum doesn't solve our particular use case because we need to interact with multiple cryptocurrencies at the same time. Um, and so we created Codius mostly for internal use and we're sharing it as an open source project in case other people use it, need it too. And it, it's really just a little, like a, a small set of tools that you can use in order to, to create smart contracts. Now, how long has the team been working on it? Um, so, when, when was its inception? When was the idea? And then, I guess, elaborate kind of on the challenges to get to the, uh, the, launch, the launching of it. So, we started working on contracts originally as part of Ripple back in 2012. 
Um, and that sort of evolved into Codeus, so it's kind of hard to say like at what part did it start to be Codeus. I would say uh, probably in March, roughly, is when we started to say, no, this should not be built into Ripple. This should be agnostic to whatever ledger you want to use, right? Um, and that's when I would call, call it Codeus and say, like, this is, this is where Codeus really started. And um, what are these long-term goals of, of Codeus that you see? So it would be great if there's adoption beyond Ripple. I mean, it's, it's fine if, if, if we just are the only users. But really, the point of an open source project is that you know, other people adopt it. And so we'd love to see the community engage, like tell us what we got wrong. Um, we have a website. It's called Codeus.org. Um, it has the white paper. It has a forum. Uh, so please go and uh, ask questions. And we'd love to, to start a conversation around that project. So what is Codeus doing to try and uh, have people adopt this? So obviously, we, we, we shared the white paper. And um, we're going to share the source code uh, pretty soon. And we'll come out with a number of use cases that we think are useful for Bitcoiners specifically, because that's the largest cryptocurrency right now. Um, and so there will be uh, at least one proof of concept for Bitcoin pull payments. Um, and we'll start to build some of the infrastructure for doing more advanced contracts on Bitcoin, right? Um, and we hope that that gets enough of interest uh, generated that people will start to look into it and, and figure out what it does. Are there any other companies out there that are kind of similar platform to you, or are you one of the kind of only exclusive platform? So for the Ledger side, um, traditionally we thought about it as like people trade on Ripple. But really, the, the real world is such that um, you want to enable people to make transactions frictionlessly. Um, so really, the focus for us now is uh, to move money very easily into Ripple, uh, let people use the distributed exchange, and let me people move money out the other side. Right. So like have that entire flow encapsulated. Um, on the smart contract side, it's um, absolutely inclusive. It's like we want to support every ledger, and uh, specifically even systems that aren't even cryptocurrencies at all, like systems that are just servers, web services, uh, email, what ha whatever you want. Got it. Now, I guess as a final closing, um, what would you like to tell our viewers finally about Codius and how to get involved in regards to adoption? Definitely go to the website, codius.org, check out the white paper, and uh, post in the forums, let us know what you think and what we can improve. Stefan, thank you so much thank for so joining much. us. We're joined here by Stefan Thomas, CTO of Ripple Labs. I'm Stephen Chen, and we're here at Coin Congress. Thank you so much for watching Money and Tech.